Here in the land of enchantment, you can feel the intense power of the New Mexico sun right on your skin. Thomas Edison pondered this with Henry Ford and Harvey Firestone four generations ago. I'd put my money on the sun, he said. What a source of power. And what a source of power it is. Our planet receives 173,000 terawatts of sunlight continuously. Do you know how much we use across the globe from all power sources, oil, natural gas, coal? 18. And do you know how much of that is met with electricity from sunlight? 0.03. So here we receive this gigantic gift from the sun, yet almost all of humanity does not have the ability to unwrap it and use it to electrify the things that are important to us. Now I'm part of a team at Sandia National Laboratories, and we're in hot pursuit of a way to provide electricity to anyone and everything, anywhere under the sun. And instead of relying on these tile-sized photovoltaic cells that you see in those rectangular solar panels, we're trying to do it with a photovoltaic light to its electricity cell that's the size of the period at the end of the sentence in your program booklet. These special dots can be put into ultra-thin sunlight concentrators on solar farms stuck onto windows, placed onto the dashboard of your car, embedded into our mobile devices, placed, patterned into our clothing, and maybe even attached to ourselves temporarily, generating electricity from the same sunlight that would otherwise give us a sunburn. This building block technology has become known as microscale photovoltaics. This is a cell, uh, a vial, containing 10,000 of our cells immersed in fluid. It kind of looks like a snow globe, and none of you are in a good position to get a good look at this, where you're sitting right now. And neither can I. But if we take those cells and we put them under a microscope, magnified 100 to 200 times, Here's what they look like. These are designs that we have built to date made from silicon, gallium arsenide, and indium gallium phosphide. Three of these cells are sunny side down, so you can see the electrical contacts where the electrons flow out and ultimately power our devices. And one is sunny side up, absorbing the light. Notice there's no wiring on that front side, so architects and designers can assemble many of these cells into aesthetically pleasing patterns, much like the dark blue and black dots in one of George Surratt's pointillist paintings. Surratt is known for making pictures from dots. And of course, Thomas Edison is known for making light from electricity. So what we could do is we could try to make green light from about 100 photovoltaic dots. In fact, that's what we have been doing since I started this talk with you. If you take a closer look, we have the stage lighting acting as our sun, impinging upon our microscale photovoltaic cells. And you guys tell me, if I block it, if this turns off. and back on. Off, then back on. Now that's not a lot of light and power, but it scales up in a way that my jacket and tie cannot. <laughs> if you take these cells and you spread them over this red dot and then let the sun shine in, it would generate 1,200 watts of electricity. That's enough to power a microwave oven, or five flat screen TVs, or 10 laptop computers. And I guarantee you that's something that what I'm wearing cannot do. <laughs> now let's pause for a moment. 
If we are to choose to go small with photovoltaics rather than big, there have to be grounded reasons for doing so. Otherwise, everything that I've shown you is simply a new type of flea circus, a tiny version of Cirque du Soleil, so to speak. So why did we choose to make these cells the same size as a black pepper speck? Because when it comes to electronics, it's the small things like transistors, diodes, and integrated circuits that transform our lives. These are the things that make the big difference. So how are we trying to do that? Our team has made highly flexible swatches from our cells so that organizations like NASA can fold ever larger solar power systems into compact launchable packages. Once in space, they could then unfurl large enough solar arrays to power ion propulsion engines. Our satellites and spacecraft could change course at will without using chemical propellants. Our cells have yielded 10 times greater power per unit weight and volume than what's being used in space today. And I can share with you that as of late July of this year, this prototype of ours has been up and running on the International Space Station. Our electrical engineers describe this version as our ungrounded prototype. <laughs> we have made stamp-sized modules to produce high voltages per, per unit area. What that means is, that, uh, is products that have lower electrical losses, higher output when partially shaded by clouds or your hand, and greater robustness when individual parts fail. And finally, reduced cost. Why is it that so few of us use light to electricity products as part of our daily lives? Because in contrast with computer chips, the cost has not come down far enough, fast enough. By going small, our team has found, analyzed, and published over a dozen ways to reduce costs while retaining the light to electricity conversion efficiency. And that includes the dramatic reduction of the most expensive processed materials. And if you can whittle down the processed materials, then you can drive costs down even further by adopting manufacturing approaches familiar to the semiconductor, microelectronics, and flat screen TV industries. It's these industries that have made our, our electrical devices affordably commonplace. And these industries can do it again by adopting the microscale photovoltaics that we have brought forth. As we develop more prototypes and ways to ultimately produce much more than 0.03 terawatts of electricity from sunlight, imagine for yourself how you could use these miniature power generators to provide the electricity that you desire or need automatically without any thought or attention from you. No longer do you have to crouch down to a wall outlet next to the airport, <laughs> or, carry, or carry a whole tackle of chargers wherever you go, and leave behind the very one that you need at the last place you plugged in. <laughs> our MePV team has shown you our work, and the results suggest that there's a better way. If we pay attention to all things great and small, the powering of almost anything could become as simple as exposing it to light. <laughs>